Good morning. Today is September 2nd, 2024. God brings a fascinating vision. We have a commentary. God brings a fascinating vision to Ezekiel in demonstration of a new life which Israel will have. The visual image of dry bones coming to life must bring a smile to Ezekiel's face as he now relates this vision. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and the tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you, bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am, that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. We have another commentary. Another sign is to be shown to the people. Two sticks, one representing the northern tribes and the other depicting the tribe of Judah, are to be held together to signify the reunif reunification of the nation of Israel. This is followed by a messianic prophecy of the new kingdom to come. Ezekiel thirty-seven fifteen. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, take a stick of wood and write on it, belonging to Judah and the Israelites associated with him. Then take another stick of wood and write on it, Ephraim's stick, belonging to Joseph and all the house of Israel associated with him. Join them together into one stick so that they will become one in your hand. When your countrymen ask you, won't you tell us what you mean by this? Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am going to take the stick to, of Joseph, which is in Ephraim's hand, and of the Israelite tribe associated with him, and join it to Judah's stick, making them a sin, single stick of wood, and they will become one in my hand. Hold before their eyes the sticks you have written on, and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from all around and bring them back into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. There will be one king over all of them, and they will never again be two nations, or be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols and vile images, or with any of their offenses, for I will save them from all their sinful backsliding, and I will cleanse them. They will be my people, and I will be their God. 
Ezekiel 37, 24. My servant David will be king over them, and they will all have one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children will live there forever. And David, my servant, will be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant. I will establish them and increase their numbers, and I will put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy, when my sanctuary is among them forever. And another commentary, the climax of Ezekiel's restoration prophecies takes his hearers not only to the new kingdom of the good shepherd, but apparently to the time when the forces of evil will be destroyed forever. The language is apocalyptic, that is symbolically predictive of future events, and challenging to interpret. But the forces of evil are represented by Gog, ruler of a land called Magog, and by Meshach and Tubal. These names correspond to the sons of the patriarch Japheth, who have generally been associated with the warlike Goths, Cretans, and Scythians. God's vision to Ezekiel is that of a great battle on a wide panor pan panorama of the universe in which death and destruction are cataclysmic, far beyond anything which either Israel or Judah has experienced. But the reasons for the destruction are the same, rebellion and wickedness. The other difference is that the punishment will be of an eternal nature. At that time there will be no restoration of the wicked, only everlasting peace and joy for the righteous. Ezekiel 38.1 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, prophesy against him and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your whole army, your horses, your horsemen, fully armed, and a great horde with large and small shields, all of them brandishing their swords. Persia, Cush, and Put, will be with them, all with shields and helmets. Also Gomer with all its troops, and Beth Togam Togarma from the far north with all its troops, the many nations with you. Get ready, be prepared, you and all the hordes gathered about you, and take command of them. After many days you will be called to arms. In future years you will invade a land that has recovered from war whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They had been brought out from the nations, and now all of them live in safety. You and all your troops and the many nations with you will go up, advancing like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On that day, thoughts will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil scheme. You will say, I will invade a land of unwalled villages. I will attack a peaceful and unsuspecting people, all of them living without walls and without gates and bars. I will plunder and loot and turn my hand against the resettled ruins and the people gathered from the nations, rich in livestock and goods, living at the center of the land. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish and all her villages will say to you, have you come to plunder? Have you gathered your hordes to loot, to carry off silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, and to seize much plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, this is what the sovereign Lord says, in that day when my people Israel are living in safety, will you not take notice of it? You will come from your place in the far north, you and many nations with you, all of them riding on horses a great horde, a mighty arm, army. You will advance against my people, Israel, like a cloud that covers the land. 
in days to come, O Gog, I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Are you not the one I spoke of in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel? At that time they prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. This is, this is what will happen in that day. When Gog at attacks the land of Israel, my hot anger will be aroused, declares the Sovereign Lord. In my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare that at that time there shall be great, a great earthquake in the land of Israel. <clears throat> the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, every creature that moves along the ground, and all the people of the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. The mountains will be overturned, the cliffs will crumble, and every wall will fall to the ground. I will summon a sword against Gog on all my mountains, declares the Sovereign Lord. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment upon him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstones and burning sulfur on him, and on his troops and on the many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness, and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against you, O Gog, chief, chief of prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around and drag you along. I will bring you from the far north and send you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will strike you your brow. I will strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. On the mountains of Israel you will fall, you and all your troops and the nations with you. I will give you as food to all kinds of carrion birds and to the wild animals. You will fall in the open field for I have spoken, declares the sovereign Lord. I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in safety in the coastlands and they will know that I am the Lord. I will make known my holy name among the people, Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profaned, and the nations will know that I, the Lord, am the Holy One in Israel. It is coming. I will surely take place. It will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is the day I have spoken of. Then those who live in the towns of Israel will go out and use the weapons for fuel and burn them up. The small and large shields, the bows and arrows, the war clubs and spears. For seven years they will use them for, for fuel. They will not need to gather wood from the fields or cut it from the forest because they will use the weapons for fuel. And they will plunder those who plundered them and loot those who looted them, declares the Sovereign Lord. On that day I will give Gog a burial place in Israel, in the valley of those who travel east toward the sea. It will block the way of travelers, because Gog and all his hordes will be buried there. So it will be called the Valley of Hamon Gog. For seven months the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them. And the day I am glorified with a memorable day for them, declares the Sovereign Lord. Men will be regularly employed to cleanse the land. Some will go throughout the land, and in addi addition to them, others will bury those that remain on the ground. At the end of the seven months, they will begin their search. As they go through the land and one of them sees a human bone, he will set up a marker beside it until the grave diggers have buried it in the valley of Hamon Gog. Also, a town called Hamona will be there. And so they will cleanse the land. Son of man, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Call out to every kind of bird and all the wild animals. Assemble and come together from all around to the sacrifice I am preparing for you. The great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. There you will eat flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of the princes of the earth as if they were rams and lambs goats and bulls, 
all of them fattened animals from Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing for you, you will eat fat till you are gluttoned, and drink blood till you are drunk. At my table you will eat your fill of horses and riders, mighty men and soldiers of every kind, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will display my glory among the nations, and all the nations will see the punishment I inflict and the hand I lay upon them. From that day forward the house of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God, and the nations will know that the people of Israel went into exile for their sin, because they were unfaithful to me. So I hid my face from them and handed them over to their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their offenses, and I hid my face from them. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will now bring Jacob back from captivity, and will have compassion on all the people of Israel, and I will be zealous for my holy name. They will forget their shame, and all the unfaithfulness they showed toward me when they lived in safety in their land with no one to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the nations, and have gathered them from the countries of their enemies, I will show myself holy through them in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. For though I sent them into exile among the nations, I will gather them to their own land, not leaving any behind. I will no longer hide my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit on the house of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord. All right, that's it for today. Okay, see you tomorrow.